disappearing. Long I stood there, wondering, fearing. <laughs> Growing up, I absolutely hated being home. At night it always sounded like someone's walking around, and there were whispers from my closet whenever it was left open. I always made sure it was closed, but most mornings it would be partially open. I would refuse to go into the basement, even during the day, and you could never escape the feeling of someone or something watching you. I'm talking full on blankets over the head, nose poking out type of childhood. One night in the summer, we had a powerful thunderstorm roll through. I remember it vividly because the lightning was near constant, and instead of white and blue, the colors were more purple and green. The storm took out the power. My father asked me to go to the kitchen and help get the candles and flashlights. I was walking down the dark hallway when something jumped out from the bathroom. The kitchen door was five feet behind it. Thinking he was my dad trying to scare me, I laughed and said, nice try. There was a loud growl, and my father put his hand on my shoulder from behind me. He pulled me back into the living room, closed and locked the door, while saying that it wasn't him, and he saw it too. The growling continued from the kitchen entryway for a good ten minutes, and it sounded like something was pacing the hallway. Dad and I spent the night in the living room. We didn't sleep. We just watched the door. We moved a few months later. The house we moved to felt good. It had no issues with feeling watched or hearing things. Felt like I could sleep without the blankets over my head. Years later, when my father was diagnosed with cancer, we started watching the ghost shows on cable. That got us talking about that night and what we saw. It was then my father revealed that the house I grew up in was an old, renovated funeral home. The way the house was renovated, my closet was the mechanical room for the lift to bring the bodies from the basement embalming room to the viewing room on the first floor. Our floor was the funeral director's private living space. My father's aunt actually owned the house and lived on the first floor which was the floor where they would have the viewings and such. The house has changed hands to cousins of mine. Talking with them, they said they had similar experiences, scratching on the wall, footsteps, banging on the basement bulkhead, and lights that would come on dimly, as if they were connected in series, rather than each light being its own circuit. They even told me they won't go into the basement alone because the stairs go down past a walk-in storage room with no lights, and they swore they hear breathing or growling when they went past. They have since moved from that house also. A few folks wanted to know if I had any more experiences growing up in what I would later find out was an old funeral home. Why yes, yes I do. We lived there for 13 years, 1977 to 1990. It wasn't until after the incident during the storm in 1990 that my father decided it was time to move. I made note of every experience we had, individually and as a family, in a journal. I'll go room by room. Every room in common. Cold spots. Odd smells were common throughout the house. We attributed that to the old steam radiator heaters. Scratching on walls at night. No rats or vermin, no insect activity or plumbing issues. Dad was a maintenance foreman. He checked everything out. Also of note, there are no trees close enough to the house. You always felt like you were being watched. None of my friends ever stayed over or wanted to come inside the house. They always said the house creeped them out. Now, onto the experiences by specific room. Entryway. The interior door of the entryway was wood with glass panes. This opened to a stairwell that leads down to the main floor. The entryway door was always locked at night. 
The door had an old hook and latch style door closure with a thumb button to operate it. It was very secure, but on many occasions my father would find the door slightly open or completely open when he got up. Sometimes, if it was early enough in the night, you could hear the click from the latch. The hallway runner would always be bunched up, even though the door cleared it easily. Bathroom. This is the room that the thing jumped out into the hallway during the storm. You never entered the bathroom in the dark. Almost the entire back of the door was covered by a mirror. Anyone closing the bathroom door always covered the mirror because it never felt right. You could see shadows move in the reflection, but not when you turned to see behind you. We couldn't take the mirror down as it had been basically painted into place. The thought of busting the mirror always made you feel nauseous and sick. The kitchen. Cabinets would open and close. The bell for the toaster would ding at odd times, even if the toaster was off or unplugged. Dining room. The main light over the table would turn on dimly red at odd times. The bulb was a bright white incandescent. At night, you could hear the old push-button switch get pushed because the click was so loud. Pantry. This room always skeeved me out. The room was like a walk-in closet for dry goods and the like. As soon as you entered, you felt like bugs were crawling all over you. But there was never a bug in sight. No spiders, nothing. Also, you made your selection quickly because you also always felt like something was going to drop on you from above. Very unsettling. Sun porch slash sunroom. For Christmas one year, my father got me a Fonzie from Happy Days pinball machine. It was kept unplugged when not in use. On a few occasions, you could hear the chunk chunk of the flippers or the sound of a ball rolling down the game field. Dad thought the game was malfunctioning, but it wasn't. There was also an electronic bowling lane. The ball would roll around the room at night sometimes. And the game played music if you got a strike right of the Valkyries. The music would sound at odd times and off speed. This is also where the attic access was. Attic. Now, the cool thing about the attic was that the former funeral director had a full bar and billiard table in the attic, along with a spare guest room. How he got that stuff up there is a mystery because the attic entryway it was super narrow. Oddly, the attic was calm. I remember a wood carving just past the door that depicted island and etched into the wood was Erin, Ireland, protect those that cross this threshold. That's basically what it said. My grandfather could read Gaelic and translated the meaning. When we moved, we took the wood carving with us with permission. I'm only the third generation in the family who wasn't born in Ireland. My dad hung it on the front door of our new house. April, 1986. It's morning and I couldn't be happier. Last night was scary. I woke up and it was still very dark. I heard scratching from my closet. I got up and turned on my room light to make sure my hamster didn't escape. She didn't. She is still in her cage. I checked the closet and it was closed. Turned off the line and went back to bed. I tried to get back to sleep, but I kept hearing noises. It sounded like my closet latch. I think it was being lifted up. I heard it click. After the latch clicked, it felt like something was in the room with me. I felt like I was being watched. I covered my head with my blankets. I heard something moving in my room. My hamster was quiet. She wasn't running in her wheel tonight or biting her water dispenser. I thought something might have harmed her, but she's okay. I hoped my mum and dad would be checking my window, but it's not summer and the windows are closed. The sound was in my room and moving around. It was near my toy box, not my window. 
My toy box is at the foot of my bed. I heard a G.I. Joe fall over. I'm not alone. My dad woke up to get ready for work, so that means it was four. He always farts or sneezes first thing. That's how I know it's him in the hallway. I'm alone in my room now. I was able to sleep once I heard dad moving in the house. I told my dad when he got home from work what happened in the night and early hours of the morning. Dad opened my closet to show me it was just stuff. It was very cold in the closet. He thinks I might have dreamed it. Mum does too. Could I have? No. My closet door was not latched and slightly open this morning. Even now with the sun up and as I'm writing this, something is watching me from the closet. I know I closed it before bedtime. There's also a rip in my Transformers sleeping bag at my feet. End of entry. May, 1986, early evening. I helped my dad cut the grass today. After that, we had to put away the tools and equipment. Unfortunately, these have to go back into the basement. I really hate the basement. It doesn't feel right, which means I get goosebumps. It smelled stuffy and heavy, like moss and very old pennies. I was helping to put away the grass catcher when Dad asked me if I saw something move along the tall wall. I think he was trying to tease me because I was really jumpy about being so far into the basement. What I didn't want to tell him was that I did see something move along that wall. It moved to the corner, then moved up the wall and then it was gone. The worst part of the basement was the storage area by the stairs. It's really dark and there's no light to turn on. I won't go in there, ever. I won't even shine a light in that room because I have nightmares about that creepy room sometimes. And in them, the floor is bloodstained. I also believe that whatever has been up to my closet at night comes up from this storage room of the basement. I stay as far away from the opening as possible because also in my nightmares, there is something in there that will pull me in if I get too close. We finish putting all the tools away and my dad always has me go before him because the old wooden stairs are loose. We make it out of the basement and my dad padlocks the door. We share a key with Aunt G and Uncle J. We usually run into Uncle J after cutting the grass. He's a nice guy and likes to make models. He has always warned me about going into the basement alone. I always took him seriously. Dad would say that Uncle Jay was trying to spook me. Anyway, I'm excited because Mum is making casserole for dinner tonight. Late evening. Mum asked me to help make the casserole and asked me to get the mac and cheese and soup from the pantry. I don't like the pantry either. It reminds me too much of my closet. I really want the casserole, so I go into the pantry and try and pull the light cord, but I couldn't find it. I think something touched my hand and I jumped back quick and closed the pantry door. I'm trying to calm down when my mum says, it's just my imagination. I tried again and found the light cord. The light goes on and I gather the stuff. I think it's odd that I can smell the basement in the pantry. And just then, along the back of the pantry wall, I see a large grey pile of what I think are worms, wiggling like the night crawlers I helped dad get for fishing. I drop the stuff to the floor and step back. My mother comes over and I point, and my mother must have seen it too because she let out a gasp and chucked the soup can at it. She then closed the door and called for my dad. Mum said she thinks she saw a squirrel or something in the pantry. Dad had a look. No squirrel. Also, no hole in the wall. No nothing. I helped my mum make the casserole. We both kept an eye on the pantry door while cooking. Mum told me that maybe we were both having imaginary issues. Late evening. 
As I'm writing this, I'm in my bedroom, burping casserole. I'm a bit worried about tonight as I was in the basement today and it likely saw me. I know what that means for tonight. May 1986, next morning. I woke up and it was morning. I guess helping dad cut the lawn and that must have helped me sleep through the night. I hear my parents talking in the kitchen. Mum was asking dad if he could figure out why all the kitchen cabinets were wide open. I heard them talking about maybe the house settling or maybe I didn't close them tight after helping with dinner cleanup. At the close them tight part, I looked over at my closet, which was again partially open and the hairs on my arm stood up. I jumped at the sound of three knocks on my bedroom door. I looked over expecting to see one or both of my parents, but no one was there. I then heard three knocks from the closet door and I bolted from my bed, kicked, the closet door closed, and I went right to my parents, knowing I couldn't explain that I made sure the closets, and my closet for that matter, were closed. End entry. June 1986. Afternoon. My parents got me the D&D Red Box. I'm really excited because I got a chance to play in summer camp last year, and it was really fun. My therapist said I needed something to focus my imagination on, to give me an outlet. I'm not sure why I need a wall plug, but he's a doctor. My cousin, three years younger than me, is coming over today for the weekend. I will let him know about what goes on at night here. No one seems to believe me when I tell them the things that I have seen, except my Uncle Jay. Evening, my room. My cousin will be here until Sunday. We spent a bunch of time reading the D&D rule books. My cousin wanted to tell scary stories. I told him, if we are unlucky we will be in one, and I explained what I had been seeing lately. He laughed it off, but requested we use a nightlight. Night, my room. My parents had gone to bed and my cousin and I had just finished going over the rule books, colouring in the dice numbers, and trying to make our first characters. We lost track of time and soon discovered that it was almost 1.15 in the morning. We decided it was time to turn in. I checked the closet. It was closed and latched. We had sleeping bags on the floor. Transformers for me. Spider-Man for the cars. We continued to goof off a bit when the room got very cold, like a window got opened. Just as my cousin went brr, we both heard a loud click. We both peered over the top of the bed and saw the closet was no longer closed completely. We also noticed the nightlight was getting dimmer and the room darker. Suddenly the room went pitch black as the nightlight went completely out. There are two large windows in my room, but there was not even any moonlight coming in. When the nightlight came back on, the closet was more open, and we both saw something dark in the corner near to a window. The nightlight went out again. The room got dark except for the moonlight coming in the window this time. The moonlight was broken by what looked like a set of three fingered hands reaching into it. Grabbing our sleeping bags, we ran to the living room, clicked on all the lights, and camped as close as we could to my parents' room. My hamster's cage was moved to the dining room, because I told my parents that maybe that was the noise I would hear at night, and that's what was waking me up. She had been in her exercise wheel. When my cousin and I ran from my room, I remember hearing the sound of her running the tube to get to her nest area. Then the house was silent. Silent until my dad tripped over my cousin. He was about to chew us out for making noise so late, or early. But a door slammed in my room, and he went to check it out. We camped out in the living room. When my dad came back, he said he would fix the closet latch 
and that we shouldn't be reading monster books up so late at night, sliding the red box to me. Oddly enough, he said, we will spend the rest of the weekend at my grandmother's house. My cousin vowed to never spend the night at my house again. June 1986, entryway. Dad brought me home after spending the weekend with my grandparents. It was honestly the best night's sleep I've had in a long time. Quiet, calm, and smelled like grandma's cooking. As we got closer to home, just seeing it, I feel sick to my stomach. On entering, I actually stopped and dropped my overnight bag. The house felt different. Before I left with my cousin, it felt spooky and frightening. But now, the only thing I can feel is just seething anger. July 1986 General observation I'm out of therapy No more journal Oh, I was keeping the journal going for something else though I'm feeling better about myself and more self-confident Meeting weekly in school for a D&D club Transferred to meeting as a group of friends during summer vacation to play I can honestly admit That I'm finally feeling more like a kid Or should I say teenager As even I have noticed I'm becoming a bit more observant of girls at least, when I'm outside the house. It's now late July and summer. Long, hot nights of little sleep. Everyone is always upset and angry at home. We need a few days of rain to cool the house and tempest down or something was going to give. Night. My room. It's hot and sticky, and none of the fans are helping. Dad was working on fixing the AC for the living room, but he's retired for the night after watching the 11 o'clock news. Our neighbours are outside. I can hear them talking and smell whatever they are cooking. I'm just waiting for exhaustion to take me. Early morning, my room. Something hit me in the night. It felt like a punch, and I awoke with my face and chest hurting. In the glow of the alarm clock, it showed me that it was 3.07am. I got out of bed and flipped on my room light. My eyes immediately looked to the closet, and to my surprise... It was latched and closed. I noticed that my hands have blood on them, and there's blood on my chest. I headed for the bathroom. Night, approximately 3.15am, bathroom. Light on, I close the door and look at the damage in the medicine cabinet mirror. Split lip, dark mark around the side of my mouth. The busted lip was where the blood came from. There are three marks on my chest, as big around as a quarter. They hurt. I'm sure there will be bruises by tomorrow afternoon, as will my face. For some reason, I got angry at my reflection. It felt like every bad thought or negative feeling I've had about myself came back ten times over and all at once. In disgust with seeing myself and how I was feeling, I opened the cabinet so I don't have to see my reflection. The cabinet mirror is now facing the mirror behind the door. I start to notice small movement in the reflections of the mirrors in the door mirror. I caused an infinity reflection due to the mirrors reflecting each other. This meant there were multiple reflections of me. Now at my limit, I angrily tossed a towel that happened to land on the robe hook. The towel covered the mirror and I could feel the pressure in the room subside considerably. I gathered myself, went through a few of the coping techniques I learned, finished cleaning myself up, and then exited the bathroom. For some reason, before turning the light to the bathroom off, I looked to the kitchen. The door leading to the sunroom and the back stairs was fully open. I shut the bathroom lights off, but there was still a glow from the room across from me. Dining room. The lights over the table are on, but not on. They are glowing dimly, even though we don't have dimmers in the house. I'm still angry from the feeling in the bathroom, and I couldn't stop myself from saying what was on my mind. Go to hell. The lights faded out, but I felt watched still. Suddenly my father is there, and I about jump out of my skin. He asked me what I was doing up. He flipped the light on and saw me, thinking that 
I may have been harming myself. He's checking out the marks and swollen lip. He's being loud when asking me what I did. Loud enough to wake my mother. That angry feeling flooded the room again, and the lights once again glowed dim. My dad looked at them with a puzzled, how the hell look, just as my mum entered the dining room. I again almost jumped out of my skin as my 100 pound 5'2 mother lunged at my 6 foot 325 pound father, howling at my dad to leave him alone and don't touch him. I hit the lights of the dining room which came on full brilliance and I see my mother has her hands along the side of my father's face, her fingernails digging into the back of his ears with blood running down his neck. My father has a grip on her shoulders. I force myself between them and split them apart, telling my mother that dad didn't do this and explaining what happened. I asked them if they couldn't feel something wasn't right in the house. This seemed to have cleared their minds. Dad and mum talk. Mum doesn't know what came over her and was just in full mama bear mode. Dad cleaned the blood off his neck, then we all talked. This time it seemed my parents might be grasping that something else might be at work here. Dad went to check the door to the back stairs. He said it was not wide open, but it was mostly closed and unlatched. The afternoon of the day after the fight, my parents have worked things out. My father spoke with Uncle Jay and he decided that we needed a vacation and we packed up some things and took off for New Hampshire for five days. End entry. Note from OP. This creeped me out as I had completely forgotten about this. I remembered my parents fighting one day, but not why. I didn't remember being physically injured. If I hadn't noted this before, my dad was a big dude. What I would not find out till after his death was that he was a Vietnam veteran. He didn't talk about it at all with us but it did explain a lot about his behavior. Slept in short shifts, would go on long drives for himself in the night. It's amazing my father restrained himself so well, or this could have ended very badly. Or perhaps, that's what this thing wanted to happen. Fifth entry about my house. Information from my father in 2013. So I have now reached the point where, as an adult, I started talking to my dad about all the crazy things that happened to us when I was growing up. I'll provide that information as applicable. My age when talking to my dad, 40. My age for this entry, 14 going on 15. It was at this point my dad revealed that the house was a funeral home before being purchased and renovated into a multi-family house. According to my father, the activity started when I was very young, only a toddler. It happened one evening after one of my aunt's friends felt something about the house and wanted to have, and then did hold, a seance. Then the feeling in the house changed from just creepy to horrific, because my aunt realized the seance must have been the reason that the house had activity. Unfortunately, she doubled down on the issue by having that same friend come in to do a cleansing. They didn't know what they were doing, just enacted something they had read in a book according to dad, and likely did it wrong and just riled everything up. My dad believed that moving was the best option for us, as nothing seemed to follow you once you left the house. To that end, my parents were trying to save for a down payment on the house, but we had a string of health issues that would undercut the savings. Examples will be coming up. My father believed that they, mum and himself, were not in control of their emotions for my fourth entry. When we went on vacation, everything went back to normal between my parents and I. Also, while on vacation, my uncle had the house blessed by a priest. This priest was a friend and kin to my uncle, same Irish clan, and this is what seemed to have dialed everything down for a while, about two years. That changed in July. 1988. July 1988. Afternoon. Outside the house. Hello again, my journal. It's been a while. Things have been quiet at home. Creepy, but quiet. I have returned to you today because I was helping my aunt and uncle load food up for our family barbecue. While carrying the trays of food, I noticed movement in the basement window. My mum and dad were outside loading our car. 
my uncle was behind me, and my aunt would not enter the basement. What I witnessed was approximately level with the basement window, which would make it about six foot tall, about my height now. It had a human-like shape, head and shoulders. Its head moved quickly side to side. Seen it too, didn't you, lad? I think so. It's been biding its time, looking for a way out. Yes, what is it? Our clan called them Demhan, and they are not natural. They find and feed on fear, anger and sorrow. They sow these emotions like crops, then harvest the field. Well, Journal, looks like I won't be sleeping the rest of my time here. Parents are saving for a new house. Night, returning home from the barbecue. We have returned home to something completely unexpected. Several police officers are on the front porch. The police talk to my uncle and my dad. My dad comes over to us and tells my mother to take me and go to my grandmother's. Dad tells us that apparently the kid broke in and damaged the place, and they are checking for missing property. We head to my grandmother's for the night. Morning, grandmother's house. Dad returned around mid-morning. He tells us that we will likely have to stay here for a while. Nothing was taken but there is damage and blood in the house. A neighbor called the cops when she noticed a broken window. My dad then goes into what happened to the best of everyone's knowledge. Someone shattered the basement window along the side of the house near the oil ports. I had such a bad feeling because that was the window I saw my uncle's damn in. My dad continued. They apparently cut themselves in the glass. It looks like they slipped into the basement through the broken window, got a pry bar from the tool wall, and pried the basement door open. The cops found the locked padlock on the floor by the door. Then, they damaged and destroyed the doors to open up the first floor, and then proceeded to damage or destroy the interior doors on our floor, except the attic door and our living room doors. Mum asked my dad what he thought would have happened if we had been home. The colour left my father's face, and his words chilled me. I don't know. End entry. Hello watchers and listeners, thank you so much for watching. As always, a big thank you to all of the Reddit users who kindly allowed me to use their stories. If you want to help support this channel, you will find links to both my Patreon and my Teespring store in the description below. So feel free to have a look. And the biggest thank you to all of you who continue to support me. I truly do appreciate it. And remember... Papa loves you. <laughs>